Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome again to Freedom Live TV. It's been a while since we came here together with you, but I believe that the Lord God has kept you up to this far. We thank you for all the subscribers who have subscribed to this channel and all those people who share these messages of truth that you may be able to share with your friend and we know one thing as the bible tells us in the book of john chapter 8 and verse 32 that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free yet today we stand here and i know that in the world many people are thinking and uh, began rationalizing the aspect of the miraculous and therefore today i want us to stand together even as we pray uh, before we continue with the topic that we are going to share today. I am asking you to be with us until the end. And when you have reached the end, please leave a comment and I know that God will bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I bless you. May your name be blessed. May your name be lifted high and above today and forevermore. For each and every listener, Father Lord, may you bless them in the name of Jesus. Meet them at their point of need and set them free, O God, wherever there is freedom that is needed. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. And therefore, today I want to bring us a simple message positioned for the miracles. Positioned for miracles. So positioned for me, the miraculous. We must admit that we have had many people go into churches and come back from churches without receiving any miracles. We have people preached for years and years, yet they have never seen a miracle happen in their lives. It is the truth to say that we have had sick people go to churches to be prayed for and unfortunately most of them end up dead simply because they did not receive a miracle. But today we want to look at ourselves and ask this question. Are we positioned for the miraculous? Are we positioned to receive the miracle that God is there? One thing I know about the Lord God in heaven, he is willing to deliver. He is willing to save. He is willing to heal in the name of Jesus. And therefore we're going to turn uh, our, our minds back into the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts chapter number 2. We hear the people speaking in tongues on the, the, the day of the Pentecost and many men have gathered together and they hear and they listen to the message and the Bible tells us and therefore Peter stood up and explained the occurrences of that day telling them it is not yet even noon. It's still early morning. These people are not drunk, but we have been endowed by the power of the Holy Spirit. A promise that Jesus had given into his disciples in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 that you shall be filled with power and that you shall go out. And the Bible tells us wherever we go out to do, uh, we just don't go to do miracles. This is one thing that we must always remember. We do not go out to perform miracles, but we go out preaching the gospel. The Bible tells us that wherever these words of mine shall be preached, wherever you take this gospel, I will accompany it. I will confirm this gospel with signs, miracles, and wonders. And therefore, the first instance of any miracles is the word of God. The Bible tells us that Peter was preaching to this man and was preaching in the synagogues and he saw faith in the eyes of one person who was there. At the entrance of the word of God, it births faith. Then faith comes up and then we can act upon the faith that we have received through the word of God. For the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And therefore we cannot purport to go out for the miraculous for the sake of the miraculous. We go for the miraculous after we have preached the word, after we have witnessed Christ Jesus who is the living God. We have to go out with the intention of the word, not the intention of the miracles. Miracle signs and wonders will follow the word, will follow the gospel, will follow the good news. Jesus says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and I have been, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I have been anointed, I've been sent, I've been set apart so that I may preach the gospel to the poor. Then he says that the setting, the setting free the captivity, setting Setting free those ones who are in darkness, bringing joy to those ones who are mourning. All these things, as we look at the Bible right from the beginning of time, we have the word spoken, then the miracle follows. When Jesus speaks to us, when preachers speak to us, when men of God speak to us, when the word of God speaks to us, 
faith comes up. And when this faith comes up, then we are able to receive miracle because our heart has accepted the word that God has spoken to us. Praise be to Jesus. There is need to revive the Pentecostal experience in our Pentecostal churches. There is very great need that we must revive the Pentecostal experience. It is not an ancient thing. It is not just for history. It is not just for reference. It is something that we need to experience each and every day of our lives. Praise be to God. And therefore, turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 6 and verse 1 to 6. The Bible says, Then he, Jesus, went out from there and came to his own country, own country, and his disciples, the Bible says, followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. He did not begin to perform the miracles. He began to teach in the synagogue. Not. Jesus went around the villages teaching and teaching and preaching and then the miracles followed after what the people heard. There is a hearing that comes first. How can they believe unless they hear? How can they hear unless they are preached to? Hallelujah. He was preaching in the synagogue and many hearing, hearing his words, they were astonished and they were saying this, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that he uh, that such mighty works are performed by his hands. Now, when you look at that last line, you may think that the writers of the Bible do not really understand what they are saying, but by the Spirit, we realize that first there must be a preaching. There must be a speaking of the word. There must be a speaking of the word of the tongue. There is, must be a speaking, a preaching of the word, conveying the message of what God is doing in this very season. So they say he has been given what wisdom has this man been given that such mighty works are done by his hands. So we cannot connect wisdom and mighty works. Now when we look at the mighty works of God and wisdom, sometimes we look at them and we think, oh, how can wisdom bring mighty works? But we see like in the contemporary world, we say knowledge is power. You see, when you have known what belongs to you, when you have known what God has declared about you, when you have known what God is saying about you, then power simply comes. Hallelujah. Then you step into the miraculous because you have heard and you have believed. Hallelujah. So he says, such wisdom has been given unto Jesus that he performs good works. And he says this, is this not the carpenter? Is, is not the son of Mary, a brother of James, Joseph, Judas, Simon? Uh, and, and not his sisters here with us. So they were offended at him. They were offended by Jesus, not because of the word. They were offended at Jesus because of his background. Something very important about men of God. The Bible reminds us in the book of, uh, in the, uh, when we go back to the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse number 20, the Bible says, Hear God and you shall be established. Hear the prophets of God that he has sent among you and you shall have good prosperity. Remember, good prosperity does not entitle, does not entail money and gold only. It entails everything that a man needs inside of Christ Jesus. And therefore, it says that his man, they have looked at his background. They have remembered who he was, a son of a carpenter. In fact, they didn't even mention about the carpenter, the son of, okay, they say, is this not the carpenter, not even the son of the carpenter, because it's the son of Isaac and Isaac, the son of Abraham. So this genealogy is equated and brought by the patriarchy. So, but here they are offended at him because they have looked at his background and maybe they are thinking, is this not the one that was born out of wedlock? They're looking at him, is this not the one that comes from our village, the mere carpenter that we used to give our woodworks to do for us? So they're offended at him because they know his background. Let me say this, many of the time you may know the man of God, you may know him very, very well. You may know him plus his background, his weaknesses, his failures. You may know everything about him and you get offended at what they are speaking. You may get offended at what the prophecy that they're giving. Let me say this again. We 
are very comfortable with men of God in our very houses of prayer in that when they stand up to bring and to speak a prophecy, we do not believe simply because we know them. They have grown familiar with this man of God. They have grown familiar with this group of people. They have grown familiar with the Pentecostal experience and many people have also gotten uh, familiar with Jesus Christ to a point where they do not honor. There is no more reverence because we know them. But let us take it out of that, that any man of God, be it a man or a woman who stands before you, a man or a woman who comes with a message from God, they are men of God not bearing their message. They are bearing the message of God. When you receive the message of God, then what happens is a miracle, signs and wonders will follow. You will be better positioned for the miraculous. Now listen to this sad statement in verse 4. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, in his own house. He's narrowing this down. He says a prophet is without honor. In every place that you have gone, he has walked, he has been honored. He has walked, he has been blessed. He has walked, he has seen things happen. But in his own hometown, there is no honor. A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, his own, among his own relatives, and among his own household. Hallelujah. But we can change the narrative. Because now we know this sad statement that Jesus made should not apply to you. Now he could not do any mighty work there except that he laid his hand on a few sick people. Jesus, who when he walks, he heals each and every person. But Jesus lays his hand upon a few sick people and he healed them. It doesn't mean that Jesus did not have the power. It didn't mean that Jesus was offended in his heart and could not. He just marveled. The man of God in the household of faith who is preaching to you, who is feeding you with the word of God, does, it doesn't mean that this man of God doesn't have the power. The thing is, do you believe what he speaks? Do you hold him in honor? Do you understand what he is saying? Because he has laid hands on a few sick people in your midst and they are well. Why are you not well? He has prayed for breakthrough for a few people in your midst. Why are you not receiving your portion? Are you positioned for the miraculous? We've said you must understand the word. Receive the word. Honor the man of God that you may uh, receive the miracles of God. But the Bible says Jesus marveled at their unbelief. Unbelief is a state of mind, it's a condition of the heart where the soul does not believe in anything. It's not connecting with what is being spoken. It is not connected with what is being prophesied and Jesus marveled at their unbelief. Praise be to Jesus. It is so sad that even today we have many church goers, but they are unbelievers. They do not believe what is being preached. We have many who preach the gospel, yet they do not believe in the miracle signs and wonders. You have many preaching the gospel, but do not yet fully accommodate the word of God. Then the Bible says he went out into the village and continued preaching. Praise be to God sad state of affairs. He left his hometown. He did not fail to continue teaching, but he continued. The word and the works must always go together. The word of God and the works will always go together. The works without the word of God, the works which are not anchored in the word of God may never stand. But when the works are there and the word is there, then they both go together and the gospel is preached in power. We must work together. Praise be to God. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 14. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them. This is speaking about Peter. And he's saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Then 
Those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Verse 42 says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They continued in the word. And as they continued in the word and fellowship and in the breaking of the bread and in prayers, in verse 33 says, Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders, signs, many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Look at what they continued. They continued praying together. They continued in the fellowship and in the doctrine of the apostles. This is not the doctrine of man. What it simply means is that they continued with the authentic gospel that was being preached by the apostles, which was delivered to the apostles by Jesus Christ. Question to you, who is a preacher? Are you preaching the authentic gospel? Or are you preaching things that please the heart of man? Are you preaching the gospel that is in the Bible that Christ delivered unto us? Or are you watering it down or pumping it with emotions to just to make people happy, to make each ears excited? Are you doing that? We must continue with the authentic gospel in the name of Jesus. When we continue with that, then we will be like Paul and Silas and they went there and said, these are the kind that turn the world upside down. This government that we are living in needs to be turned upside down. The only thing that can turn it upside down is the gospel and the works of wonders that may be done by the church in the name of Jesus. Now, what hindered the miracles in the time of Jesus? One, familiarity. And two, offense and hostility. Do not be familiar with the man of God. Do not be familiar with the word of God. Familiar here means that umezoea in Kiswahili, as we say. You just take it as you take it lightly. There is no weight that you put upon it. Then you're offended and you're hostile towards it. Anything comes, you have the, the you're the first one to criticize it, the first one to beat it down, or the first one to say and bring in rationale. Sometimes we do not have to think. Sometimes we just go by what God says and the miracles will happen. We do not have to go to science. Science is limited. I appreciate God for science and all the scientists, but science is limited compared to the word of God. The word of God is powerful in the name of Jesus Christ. We are often offended by one, the minister. We look at how he is dressed and we are saying, oh, we cannot listen to him because he's in a ragged jeans. We cannot listen to teacher Masai because he's dressed in a suit. We cannot listen to that one because he is putting on shorts. I remember once we went to Turkana and we were preaching the gospel and in the morning we found some kids playing there with paper balls and we said, oh, we have to join play with them. Then the people who were hosting us came around and they say, ha, these people backslidden. They are not ministers of God simply because we are playing ball with children. So do not judge the minister. Do not look at how they are dressed. This is not just a problem for us. It was a problem for Samuel when he saw the men that were huge, the tall people, the Abinadab, the shamas of this world. They said, oh, this surely must be the anointed of God. And they said, yeah, but God reminded, God reminded Saul and said, God does not look at the physical appearance. God looks at the heart. Look at the heart of the minister. Is it full of the testimony of Christ? Is it full of the word of God? If it's full with the word of God, then go by his word. Trust him. Number two, we are offended by the message. Every time a message is preached, and mostly today, when you preach a message about sin, even in love, people will say you're condemning, you're judging, you, 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 you are, you're being hostile, you're, you're not accommodating. But the message is the message. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. If we continue in sin, we shall die. We shall reap death. We shall reap eternal separation from God. It is not judgment. And maybe your miracle is hindered by sin within you. So when you receive the message of repentance and you repent and you turn away from your evil ways, the Bible says God. God 
will hear from the heavenly places and he will minister to you in miracles. And sometimes we are also offended by the miracles because we have this mindset and we are saying we need a miracle of this kind, not this other kind. We must always know that if it comes from God, if it is resurrection of the dead, glorify Jesus. If it is financial breakthrough, glorify Jesus. If it is healing, glorify Jesus. We get offended and we say, how come this one was healed and this one is not? No, it is not in our place to criticize the miracles and the working of God. The Bible says he blesses whom he wills. He lifts that one whom he wills. It is by the will of God to will and to do in the name of Jesus Christ. We must be positioned for miracles. Let us unite in faith, believe in the wholesome word of God. What is the Bible saying? What is God preaching to us? What is the spirit of God saying to us? We must be convicted by the word for the, um, hallelujah, convicted by the word of God. We need to value the power of the Holy Spirit. Value the power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is power. We was the, Jesus said, he will come upon you and you shall do mighty works. Do not go out until you have received the Holy Spirit. And Paul says, do not be ignorant of the gifts of the Holy Spirit because the power of the Holy Spirit doesn't just come. It has come and it's been apportioned. And the Bible says it comes through the giftings, the revelatory gift, the vocal gifts and the power gifts. That you can find in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1, you read down up to verse number 10, then you will understand. But let's read the book of Acts chapter 14 and verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, this man heard Paul speaking. Uh, Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said to him in a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. The man leaped and the man walked. As simple as that. The thing I'm wondering and the question I'm asking, why should we be performing a lot of dramas in our stages today? We look at people, men of God, dressed in suits and in attires and calling themselves generals. We are looking at them, ranking themselves and kicking people and uh, um, trying to do things, gymnastics. Gymnastics don't bring miracles. The word of God does bring the miracles. Gymnastics will hurt people. People will go home excited and see no miracles and they will become disappointed and say, oh, God doesn't answer prayers. God answers all prayers in the name of Jesus. The Bible says he said he saw faith in his eyes because he was convicted by the word and valued the power of the Holy Spirit. And Paul said, stand up straight on your feet. And the Bible said the man lived and walked. Hallelujah. We have to continue in the power of the Holy Spirit. Do not be offended. Do not be offended. As we unite together in faith, I know I have spoken about this and many people and many people believe in jumping and in gymnastics, which I do not refuse. It is okay. But today I am here to bring you the word of God and the word of God which sets man free. This word can set you free wherever you are today. And I am going to pray with you wherever you are. Just unite yourself in the faith that God is able to heal. God is able to deliver. God is able to lift. God is able to turn things around in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that by your power and by your spirit, people have heard this message, O oh God. And this person who is listening even today, Father, I pray for your healing upon them in the name of Jesus. I pray for breakthrough, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for deliverance and the setting free in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, by your power and by your might, O oh God, we pray for our governments and our countries, O oh God. We pray for the reconciliation in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your name be blessed and let your name be lifted high and above, for you have done it in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. My name is Teacher Masai. I am the host of uh, Freedom Live TV and I bring a message and my objective is one, that you may know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to share this very message with many, many people who are listening and many, many people who would want to be blessed with the same message. God bless you. Shalom.